What's up, Stevie Dubs? Hey, brother Glenn. How you, buddy? <laughs> yeah, Steve, I got my days right today. I was just seeing if anybody knows. Hey, Rita, I hope you're doing good today. Hey, Vicky, I hope you're doing good. Hey, Miss Brenda, I hope you're having a good, beautiful Tuesday. Hey, Sandra, I hope things are good up in Morris, Alabama. Hello, Donna, how are you today? Vicky, I'm sure she's good. Brenda's good. Miss Linda, how are you, Mr. Roger and Catherine? Hope y'all doing good. Vicky, hope you're well and your family. There's Sandra saying hey back. She's a sweetheart. Carter, oh, I'm glad you got your mama on there. Good to see you and Rebecca. Miss Shirley Elkins, good to see you tonight. I hope you've had a good day. <laughs> we'll wait just a minute or so. Are you getting anything saying low connection, all that kind of stuff? Okay, all right. I'm going to have to make a little switch here right quick. That should be good now. Is anybody having any interruption in getting the signal? Hey, buddy, how you doing? Okay, just want to make sure wouldn't have any problem with signal. Hello, Miss Mary. Hope you're doing good today. We'll wait just another few seconds, 30 seconds or so. Just give a little time, then we'll get started. Okay, good. Rebecca's telling me good. Now I'm getting low network connection again. All right, guys, I'm afraid this thing's going to cut off in the middle. I think I'm going to have to switch my connection. So if y'all can bear with me, I may have to go off and come right back on. Let me see how this works. If you lose me, come right back. Everybody still with me? Okay, good. Okay, good. I didn't lose anybody. I was afraid I'd lose somebody. I just had to go back to the uh, data because the Wi-Fi sometimes breaks down outside okay guys looks like we're hey miss molly how you and rick tonight all right i think we're about ready so we'll go ahead and get started thank y'all so much for tuning in and uh hey just in case you wonder i do know it's tuesday I got my days mixed up uh yesterday evening and i'd already recorded that 10 minute video and so i thought <laughs> Uh, I'll just see if anybody notices and of course it didn't take you long to notice But let me just mention a couple of things to you uh, to get started here on Tuesday April 21st you can believe it um, As always we ask you please feel free to share prayer requests praise reports That's an everyday thing because we want to join you in prayer and we want to celebrate we when God answers prayer So uh, appreciate you doing that. I want to continue to remind you to pray for our first responders, our fire police, EMS, our 911 operators, uh, we know that they're uh, constantly on the job and constantly need our prayers, so I appreciate you praying for them. All essential employees, regardless of what they're doing, we want to be praying for them and uh, praying for their safety and security. Also, uh, begin praying, if you haven't already, for folks who will be returning to work soon because uh, as things do open up, folks will be returning to work, and there will be some apprehension, I'm sure, and some anxiety. So I would encourage you to pray for them and their families. Pray for companies as they open up um, uh, their company. They're making a lot of preparations to welcome their workforce back, whether it's in a small amount or a large amount. And they're making preparations for a new normal also and pray for your leaders local state national i can't remind you enough I try to remember that every day because whatever level they're at they've got great responsibility 
and they desperately need the prayers of God's people. And last but not least, I would ask you to really pray at this stage as we enter a new phase um, of this pandemic response. Pray for your, your pastors and church leaders. Some of you attend other churches and have wonderful pastors and wonderful church staff and wonderful leadership. And I know you're praying for them and I appreciate you sharing these few minutes with us because please know we're praying for all of them, regardless of whether you're a small country church, whether you're in a rural area, a suburban area, or whether you're a mega church. There are going to be challenges that every church will face, and as we make preparations to return to public worship at some time in the future, uh, there's a lot of things that need to be done, and your your leaders need um, need you to pray for their wisdom more than anything else. I hope to personally have more information to share with you, hopefully by Sunday, if not into the early part of next week, concerning when it may be possible uh, for us to return to offering public worship, what that's going to look like. And I know that there will be a lot of uh, preparations we will need to make between now and then, and we covet your prayers for that. Uh, and I have been, of course, in contact with some dear brothers uh, and their work to get ready. And many of them have shared wisdom with me. And, and I am grateful for that. Done a lot of reading and preparation. Have communicated with several of our leaders to get ready for this time. So uh, we'll be working closely to get everything together. And we'll be talking about that when uh, we have more of a concrete time. So please be patient with us and know that your safety, your security are very important to your shepherd. Please know that, that uh, as we move forward, yes, uh, man, I, I love worship. Y'all know that I love to worship together with God's people, but I also know there's a lot of things in consideration that we've never had to deal with before. So please bear with us. Please have patience with us. Please pray for us and know that we're working for your good as God works together for all of our good. Just know that preparations are underway and uh, we're working diligently on that. And just in case you wonder, please encourage people to know that our live service feed will continue. That's not going to change even after we are able to meet together corporately each week. Uh, if there's a period of time that there's still some concern, we're going to address all of those things and we're going to continue to offer the online feed because we love you, we care about you, we want to be a blessing to you, we want to help you in your journey with Jesus. And so that's going to be something that's going to continue and not going to change at all. So do know that. Hey, I want to talk to you from God's Word today because y'all know how precious the Word of God is to me and how powerful it is for all of us, and I'm grateful for how God uses it. I, I was taught years ago by a very wise uh, Bible teacher that the primary way God has chosen to speak to His children is through His Word. Does God speak in other ways? Sure, without a doubt, but sometimes you wonder, well, was that from God or not? But when it's from this word, you don't have to question it. It is God speaking to man. So with that in mind, I was reading this morning, and this is my journal. Y'all know I talk to you sometimes when it's not about my journal. I like these type of journals that are kind of hard back and have some durability to them because I, I guess I'm kind of rough on them. I don't know. But nevertheless, I enjoy writing in my journal and was challenged years ago to go through the discipline. I read a little book called... Uh, spiritual disciplines it was in a spiritual disciplines class and I was really challenged by that at New Orleans Seminary to really document my journey so I've really been documenting a lot about this journey because this is one we've never been on before but I was reading this morning second Kings chapter 5 about the encounter that Naaman you know he was a big shot uh, but he uh, he had a problem so he encountered the man of God Elisha and during that encounter, I want to tell you, there's some interesting things happen that I think speak to you and I today. So I just want to share a couple of those with you uh, this evening. If you'll remember, and I'm reading some things that I wrote this morning, how that 2 Kings records this story. Naaman was an important guy. He was a commander in the army of the king of Syria. Yes, he was a pretty important person, but there's something about him uh, that was very humbling. It wasn't at first, but it became because Naaman had a problem he couldn't fix. <laughs> kind of like us, doesn't he? 
we got a problem we can't fix on our own. Naaman had a problem because he had contracted leprosy. And in those days, you know, the disease of leprosy was, to was a total death sentence. It wasn't a quick death. The average was about nine years that a person dealt with this disease. But during that time, they would literally fall apart. Their body would undergo such, uh, it would just be totally dismantled. And their life would be misery. They would be separated from other people. They couldn't, nobody would hug them. Nobody would touch them. Nobody would even get close to them. They had to wear a cloth over their mouth. They had to cry unclean anytime they encountered someone. So this was a very lonely way to live. So Naaman's a big shot guy, but he's got a problem that he cannot fix. Even though the Bible says he was a mighty man of valor and that he was a valiant warrior, he had no answer to the cure for this leprosy that he had contracted, but he was about to find out something. He was about to find an answer to his problem, but his answer came from an unlikely source. Now, he probably expected some important person in the king of Syria's army to have an answer, but his answer came through this little Israelite girl that had been captured by them in one of their raids who was a servant to his wife. Uh, she said, well, i tell you what he needs to do. He needs to go down there, and he needs to see the man of God. He needs to go see Elisha. So she told Naaman's wife about this, that he needed to go see this prophet in Samaria, which was another slap in the face. Why would they go to Samaria? They were used to whipping them pretty good, so they weren't going to go there. But it didn't matter, because Naaman's situation was getting very desperate. And when people get desperate, they are willing to accept ways to get healed, even if it's not from the way that they first intended. So he had a problem he couldn't fix. His cure was about to come from a very unlikely source. But notice something else about it. In verse 9 of 2 Kings chapter 5, we read of the moment where Naaman literally stood at the door of the house where Elisha, the man of God, was. When Naaman got there, he got upset real quick because he was enraged over the fact that Elisha didn't come out to greet him, didn't talk about how important he was, but didn't even come out. Just gave him a message and said, tell him to go down to Jordan, dip seven times, and the leprosy will go away. He was enraged at the message he received, but he was also upset that he didn't even come out there to talk to him didn't just come wave his hand over him and fix his problem. But isn't that the way sometimes we look at the Lord's instruction? We have preconceived ideas of how we want God to fix our problems. A lot of us, most of us could raise our hand and honestly say that we had no idea that this virus would cause us to already miss four or five weeks of church and, and a few more at least. So we we knew that we had no idea that it was going to work out the way it did. We get offended when God doesn't do things in our way, when he doesn't do things on our timetable. But thankfully, Naaman had some people that cared enough about him to speak the truth in his life. You and I need people like that. We need people who will tell us the truth even if it doesn't sit well with us. The Bible teaches us that the wounds of a friend are better than the kisses of an enemy. So they spoke up to him and said, look, here, here's what you need to do. You might ought to pay attention to what the man said because if Elisha had asked Naaman to do something great, he would have been willing. If Elisha's orders would have glorified Naaman, he would have been all over it. But Elisha's orders required something of Naaman that he wasn't used to exhibiting, and that was humility. He required Naaman to lower himself in order that he might be healed. I don't know about you, but I wonder sometimes, and I wrote this this morning, when God has asked me to humble myself in order to receive greater blessings, I wonder how many times pride has gotten in the way. How about you? Maybe there's some times God has really stirred your heart through the power of the Holy Spirit to humble yourself so that he could use you in a great way, but pride gets in the way. I know that's a big challenge. But let me finish this story by telling you about Naaman's transformation. See, he had a problem he couldn't fix. It came from a source he didn't like, and the cure came in an undesirable place, the Jordan, that dirty river. But notice the depth of his transformation. Verse 14 records these words. 
when he dipped in Jordan seven times, as Elisha said, his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child. Oh, we know what it's like. I remember my children when they were born, how their their skin was so soft and their mama got all kinds of stuff to keep it soft and make them smell good. And his flesh was like that. Verse 15 said that he spoke and said, there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. And he also said in verse 15, please take a gift from your servant. Did you hear that? He offered a gift and he referred to himself as Elisha's servant. See, we read of his physical healing in verse 14, but in verse 15, we read of his inward change. See, you can try to smear something on the outside and you'll still be the same person. But when God cleans you up from the inside out and he transforms your heart and you become a humble servant of God, boy, only God can do something like that. See, Naaman is acknowledging uh, the God that Elisha serves as the one true God, and he is presenting himself as a servant to Elisha. Just a short while ago, he's mad at him. He was ticked. That's the Greek word for being mad, okay? He was ticked. He said, uh, how dare him not even come out here and greet me? How dare him tell me to wash in that dirty old river? I'm not going to do it. So just a short while ago, he was mad, but now <laughs> he's being... He was all upset, but when he heard and he heeded the instructions of the man of God, after the persuasion from his servants, he was humbled by what was taking place. No longer was disease ravaging his body. No longer would that disease be responsible for taking his life. He had a new life, a new life to begin and a new perspective on how his life would go. He was no longer a slave to his own desires nor was he impressed by his own status. Well, think about that. Maybe that's what the world is getting during this pandemic. Maybe we're being reminded that we shouldn't be so impressed with our status. Maybe we are being reminded that we shouldn't be a slave to our desires. Maybe we're being reminded that it's all about him and that's all that matters. Maybe we're being reminded that we need a new and fresh encounter with God. And that's my prayer for you. And that's what God is helping me, teaching me, and walking me through this pandemic is he's reminding me of the importance of a fresh encounter with him. And I'm finding it right here in the Old Testament. Reading about Elisha and reading about how God used him and how he was faithful to God regardless of what was going on around him. Friend, I really believe there's a lot of thoughts out there of not on what the church is going to be like, but how strong is the church going to be on the other side of this? Well, I really believe in due time, the Bible says if we humble ourselves on the mighty hand of God, that in, he will exalt us in due time. I believe in due time, if we humble ourselves, I believe the church can be more strong, can be more powerful, and can be of a greater influence to the world than ever before in our lifetime if we will humble ourselves, seek his face, turn from our wicked ways. If we will do those things, I believe God will exalt his people and use us in greater ways in the future than we ever saw in the past. So I just want you to know, I want to share that with you today that sometimes you're not going to be able to fix your problem. Sometimes the cure is going to come from somewhere you're not looking. And sometimes you're not going to be real happy with the path God puts you through. But I want you to know on the other side, for the obedient child of God, there's great glory. Remember Sunday morning I shared with you? Romans 8, 18. For I do not consider the things that I'm going, the, the pains of this life, the difficulties, I do not consider the pains and the chastisement of this life to be worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. God is good. He's faithful. And I'm sure appreciative of his faithfulness tonight. Hey, church, I want to remind you before you go, in case you forgot, the pastor loves you. There ain't a thing you can do about it. I'm going to love you because he first loved me. I get to love him back, and I get to love his people. So enjoy your Tuesday evening. See, I got my day right twice. I didn't mess it up like I did yesterday. Tuesday evening, April 21st. Enjoy your Tuesday evening. Have a great night. Get some rest. 
Wake up tomorrow morning, Lord willing, a new day to serve him. Take care. Have a great evening. I look forward to talking to you soon.